Good morning, Prospectors. I'm Riley Spitzer. And I'm Cece Acosta. And this is The Nugget, where every Wednesday you mine it, we, we pan, pan it. it. In case you're unable to attend the recent vocal auditions for the spring musical, Spongebob, please come see Mrs. Agluski in the choir room today after school, or Mr. Lanfear in the drama room on Thursday after school. The auditions are open to all students. Come out and be a part of this amazing production. Boys and Girls Tennis Trials begin on Monday, February 5th at 3 p.m. at the tennis courts. Anyone is welcome to join, and you do not have to have experience. If you have any questions, please reach out to Mrs. Powell. Her email is jenniferpowell at goaj.org. We do have extra tennis rackets if you do not have one. Please make sure to come dressed in athletic clothing, tennis shoes, and make sure to bring a water bottle. Mr. Davis and the Prospector Yearbook team have been working tirelessly all year taking photos, conducting interviews, writing captions, and sitting in front of laptops putting it all together in order to create the very best yearbook AJHS has ever had. Our own Lexi Goyette spoke with the yearbook crew to discuss what it takes to tackle such an endeavor. The AJHS yearbook, appropriately titled The Prospector, has a storied tradition that goes back many decades. Award-winning yearbook advisor Jason Davis has long been a fixture at the junior high as the yearbook sponsor there, and when he got the call to jump up to the high school to take over the program here, he knew it was something he had to do. Davis, who has been a yearbook advisor for over 15 years, says the best way to even begin the process of starting a yearbook each year is to have your finger on the pulse of the current crop of students. Well, we always start with what is the story of the year. Any good yearbook and good yearbook theme starts with story. And so that's what we sit down and look at. and. If possible, we start the year before. So we actually started talking about our theme and our story way back last year in April, and I think we had our theme phrase for this year's yearbook set by the end of April last year. And then we just start looking at how can we uh, tell new stories that relate to the story of this year and the different things that are happening and how is this year different than last year. Obviously we have to cover all the things that happen every year. Homecoming happens every year and football season happens every year, but how can we you know, cover those things differently this year than we did last year? How can we make sure that our book this year looks different than last year because no two years are the same? The first step in creating a yearbook program, of course, is to focus on who will be leading the endeavor. Freshman Rylan Paris says the editors of the Prospector Yearbook are both compassionate and encouraging. Um, we have two main people that really keep our um, the book going and keep the deadlines in place and then just keep us all, to, all together um, in line. They create a lot of stuff, they put a lot of stuff in for yearbook and that's Reagan and Tiffany. You can go to them to ask anything. Mr. Davis is really big on making sure we have that support from both the high school and the middle school. They taught me a lot of stuff, whether it was about things I specialized in or not. He's um, really big on making this a student book, as much as he puts in the hours and stuff like that. Yearbook Editor-in-Chief Tiffany Hutchinson, a senior, says the yearbook staff basically had to start at square one with the yearbook as there wasn't exactly a long-running program for the yearbook at that point. When first bringing over our Cactus Canyon program to the high school to help create you guys a completely journalistic yearbook, we were kind of starting with nothing. And so our advisor came over and then we got a lot of award-winning journalists who were on our eighth grade staff or my eighth grade staff who came over. And so there was a lot of just like behind the scenes trying to figure out what's the theme gonna be, the colors and the fonts and how do we want to convey that. Also with high school, we had to get all new equipment um, and teach some new people how to do and write journalistic stories and take photos and so that was definitely a hurdle we had to get over. Um, on top of that, it was a lot of um, like leadership building. Despite the fact that this crew has quite a few freshmen and sophomores, the combined experience of its members reaches in, into the decades. 
Sophomore Reagan Stoltz, who is also a co-editor-in-chief, believes working together is what enables them to tackle such a daunting task. Our staff this year has worked so hard on everything we've been doing. We have such an amazing and talented staff this year. We had a lot of our past junior high members come up and they are now freshmen who have been working on their books for two years now and they're also talented. We have talented photographers, writers, designers, and leaders. So everything our staff has been doing is it's top tier. We have people who worked on the book six years ago working on it now. We also have um, two aspiring young journalists, myself and Tiffany, our other editor-in-chief. Um, we have also, we've made pacemaker winner books, uh, crown winners. Those are, I think, the Grammys and the Emmys of uh, the yearbook world. So we win very high level awards and to have many different staff members who have worked on different levels of that come together and make this year's book. It's just, they put so much dedication and so much work into it that it just makes this book so special. Putting together a yearbook is no small task. Not only do you hope to include every student in some way, but you have to do this over the course of a full school year and have it ready to go to the yearbook company by March. This is no small task. Freshman Jane Schleiper says the yearbook staff plans both long and short term in order to achieve their goals. So we have this thing called the 13 day plan where basically we split up into different groups and basically um, there's a leader of the group, which in my group, that's me. And we're like, okay, if you're working on this caption, you're working on this caption. And we decide what mods we want to put in the book, what goes on which page, just stuff like that. And there's been a few times where uh, groups haven't completely gotten everything done, so a lot of people have had to step in and done captions for other people, go interview certain people that maybe other people shouldn't have had to interview. So we, we basically just step in and help each other out a lot. Freshman Caden Spicer is new to the program and says it was the leadership who helped him not only jump right in, but also find the courage to become a leader himself. So I think I usually come in to the process a little bit later. Um, usually I'm kind of in charge of, you know, talking about theme elements and trying to get like the reasoning behind things and I think that um, after, because I wasn't here for junior year, I'm a freshman, so um, coming in this year I saw, you know, Tiffany and obviously Reagan, both being editor-in-chief, they had a hold of what they were doing and so really for me starting from scratch was more, um, I felt like I had a foundation and so I have built, you know, I have ideas and I have a bunch of things that I've formed um, to better explain the theme and better go into depth about that. Spicer goes on to explain the process of taking a story idea from just an idea and turning it into a yearbook page. Um, I think for me, like looking at this book, I feel like it's going to be special and not the same as the other books because the staff that we've built this year is wildly talented in so many different ways and that makes our book more advanced in all departments because me, I am a story writer and so I am, I have like my team and my team is good story writers and so we advance the book um, in that way and then we have good caption writers who advance the book in that way and then we have you know some of the best designers we've had in years working on this book and I think that overall it's like an all-around thing where if you look at the book everything fits together well and I think that just that in itself differentiates it from other books because this book has so much talent and thought behind it that it just naturally it is better all around. Hutchinson says the key to pulling the whole thing together is teamwork. You have to have faith in yourself, your fellow yearbook staff, and the leadership of Mr. Davis. Putting together this yearbook is definitely, it's a very stressful task. I mean, sometimes we're at school till nine, we're at almost every home basketball, football, soccer game, and so it's, it's a lot of work. But I think it's the work that like makes it so exciting is you guys essentially at the end of the year, you get our homework. This is a massive project we've been working on since June. And so to like see it all come together, is just really exciting because you get to see like when the fonts match, when the colors match and all the photos come together. And there's nothing more fun than when a student opens their book and they point to themselves and they go, oh, I remember doing that. Or I remember this point in time and it's, it's really cool just to see your guys' reaction to something that we've spent hours and hours of our life on. 
It's not too late to order your 2023 to 2024 Prospector yearbook. Price is $67 until they run out. So don't procrastinate. If you still want a senior ad, there is still time, barely as you need to have them in by this Friday, January 19th. To order a yearbook or buy an ad, simply go to yearbookforever.com. The Prospector Wrestling Squad has been pounding the mat all season with tournaments across the valley. Tony Hilton spoke with Coach Euling and some of the players about the highlights of this wrestling season. It's been labeled the most taxing physical sport on the planet and has its roots in ancient Greece. It's wrestling and AJHS has one of the top programs in the valley. This season has had its ups and downs with prospector wrestlers competing in a number of competitive tournaments almost each and every week. Coach Mark Euling says they had to make a few adjustments from last year coming into this year. The adjustments that we've made is uh, having to go around the entire uh, student body and try to recruit. Uh, we've got some more numbers in the program. Obviously when you lose seniors and you lose kids that move schools or move out of state, that always hurts. But at the same time, it's the same motto with every year, rebuild and reload. Senior Jake Adams was drawn into wrestling from a young age due to his brothers being part of the wrestling team. What made me wanted to start doing wrestling was um, my brothers were really big wrestlers, both of them. And so, you know, I would come home and they'd just beat me up. So I needed to defend myself somehow. And at first I never really liked it that much, but then I grew to love the sport later on in my career. Senior Micah Pape was drawn into wrestling by his friend Jake Adams and figured if he was having so much fun doing it, why shouldn't I wrestle too? Um, my friend Jacob, uh, he was in wrestling his whole life and I've grown up with him as my friend. So he kind of got me into it when I got into high school and stuff. And my first season of doing it, I, kinda, I just fell in love doing it and it was one of my favorite sports. I'm ready. It should come as no surprise that sophomore Luca Pape was drawn to wrestling as not only does his brother wrestle, but also many of his friends. So I wrestled when I was a kid and I liked it and then through like middle school I stopped and whenever I got to high school my brother was wrestling so I joined and I like it, I love it a lot. Senior Shauna Harper also jumped into wrestling because she had friends already participating in the sport. I was really excited for this season because of the new moves they were going to teach us. And the highs for this season was getting second place three times at three different tournaments. And the lows was losing the three championship matches, but, you know, still second place. Sophomore Ashton Bongo began wrestling in order to help him with his football skills. So wrestling was something that I didn't really think I was going to do. It wasn't something I really thought I would do. I only did it because I was told by a few people that helped me do with my lining skills and with football in general. Coach Euling believes the key to any good wrestling program is to focus on constantly getting better at what you do which is why he pushes his wrestlers to strive for greatness. Uh, just to stay focused on the goal and improving every day. Because a lot of people lose, in, uh, lose sight of the overall goal of wrestling and some people look at it as wins and losses, but in reality you just need to improve 1% every day. Harper says her and the team have had a number of highlights this season and she is proud of the success she and her teammates have had. I was really excited for this season because of the new moves they were going to teach us. And the highs for this season was getting second place three times at three different tournaments. And the lows was losing the three championship matches. Pongo but... is most satisfied with his own personal performance on the mat as he believes he is head and shoulders above what he was last year. My excitement level for this right, next wrestling season is about seven, eight, because I like good. wrestling. I'm mainly proud of how much I improved over the past year. 
Luca Pape is satisfied with his performance this year, but more importantly, he says, are the bonds that were formed by the wrestlers this year. So, I was really excited coming into the season. I was waiting for it for a little bit, and then I'm really proud of how close our team's gotten and how like well bonded we are. Adam, like his fellow 12th grade teammate, Micah, believes this year was the culmination of hours and hours of practice and buckets and buckets of sweat poured out onto the wrestling mat. Yeah, my level of excitement is very high. I feel like it's got a lot of high stakes to it since it's my senior year, and it's really like my last go at the whole thing. Um, I, I'm pretty proud of the fact that I've stuck with it so long, and the fact that I've been able to grow these bonds with my teammates. They're like family to me, they're like my brothers, so yeah, it's been really just a blessing to have. The AJHS wrestling squad hits the mat today, here at home. You've seen him in the STEM building, a perpetual smile glued upon his face and a willingness to help any student in need. It's AJHS science teacher Robert Walker. Mario Torres Hernandez had a chance to speak with Mr. Walker in order to find out what really makes him tick. AJHS science teacher, Mr. Robert Walker, has been in the classroom for 26 years and has seen a number of changes in the way that classes are taught and the way students learn. But one thing has not changed, and that is his love for the classroom. I've always liked uh, working with teenagers, and I really enjoy science and agriculture, so that's why I became a teacher. Walker taught all grade levels in his teaching career and has degrees from Ball State University and North Carolina State University. As far as his teaching style is concerned, Walker says if you only look at books and paper all day, you aren't doing it right. Well, I remember that uh, I really liked working hands-on, so I do try to do as many hands-on assignments with my students as I can, and that's, you know, in science class, I like to do labs, and I also am um, looking forward to teaching agriculture because with agriculture, you really can't teach agriculture without teaching hands-on. Growing things, working with animals, it comes hand-in-hand. Walker has been instrumental in filling the void for the EVA program, which was moved from AJHS to the EVA campuses here in the East Valley. Beginning next year, AJHS will have its own 4-H agricultural program, which Walker will lead. To Walker, teaching is both rewarding and challenging, but he also loves to spend his free time hitting the outdoors and spending time with family. I like to hike fish, and I also like to spend time with my family, and I would say traveling as well. Walker, whose favorite food is pizza, says if he had all the money in the world, he would become a philanthropist, which means he would give his hard-earned money to those in need. Until that day, Walker says he will continue to teach, as it is both challenging and rewarding. Well, each class is different. Um, you know, the uh, relationships you get with students, it's always going to be, you know, unique. Um, but students really haven't changed over the last 26 years, so it's sort of fun to get to know them, build relationships with them, see them learn, see them grow, see them um, uh, mature. So that's what's fun about teaching high school is you get to see students grow from ninth grade, if you have them in ninth grade, all the way through high school. Mr. Walker spends his time in the STEM building and encourages students to stop by and say hello. Basketball tonight versus Visa Grande here at home. Girls soccer this afternoon versus Combs. This match is also here at AJHS. There will be a multi-team wrestling tournament here at AJ beginning at 4 p.m. Girls basketball here at home on Thursday against Cortez. Boys soccer on Thursday here at home versus Coronado. And finally on Friday, it's boys basketball taking on Tempe. And don't forget, wear purple on Friday for Alzheimer's awareness. And that's all for today. Have a great day. The, the Prospector, Prospector Way. way.